Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to this special edition of the Doha Debates coming to you from the Gulf state of Qatar and sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. It's no secret that the Palestinians are deeply divided. In 2007, when Hamas expelled Fatah from Gaza, scores of people were killed in the factional violence. Since then, the two sides are accused by human rights groups of illegally detaining hundreds of each other's supporters, and in some cases, torturing and executing them. Peace deals have come and gone, the Mecca deal, the Yemen deal. Now we're told the two sides are close to an Egyptian-sponsored deal, but already they're accusing not just each other, but both Cairo and Washington as well of trying to undermine the accord. Will this deal, so far unsigned, disintegrate like others before it? What went wrong in the past and can it be fixed? In this unique session, we bring together senior officials from Hamas and Fatah for you to question about why they have fought each other, how they can settle their differences, and why they feel they should represent the Palestinian people. Because of the special nature of this event, we've dispensed with the normal debating motion. But we will be asking you to vote at the end on one question. Do you have confidence in the current Palestinian leaders? Well, our speakers have traveled far and wide to be here. They are from Fatah, Dr. Nabil Shah, one of the PLO's chief negotiators, and the Palestinian Authority's first ever foreign minister from 2003 to 2005. And with him, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, chairman of the political committee, of the Palestinian Legislative Council and senior Fatah spokesman. From Hamas, Osama Hamdan, Hamas representative in Lebanon and a member of the organization's political bureau. He has also participated in talks between Hamas and European officials. And Mohammed Nazal, senior Hamas leader in Damascus and spokesperson for the political bureau. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. So now let me first call upon Nabil Shah to give his view of the conflict with Hamas and the ways out of it. We the Palestinians are a people who fought bravely for a hundred years to achieve the freedom of our country and the return of our refugees. In the 20th century, we are the very last colony in this world today. We struggled united most of the time. We differed politically at times, but this is the first time we split politically and geographically, the worst. Nothing worse could hit a beleaguered people than disunity, leading to separation and civil war. Civil wars are the worst in history, pitting brother against brother. There are always third parties interested in keeping the parties at war. But the enemy and the third parties are not the only parties to blame. We have to take responsibility. Why did we allow it to happen in the first place or to continue? I refuse the insult that we are nothing but clients of Iran and America. We are independent strugglers for freedom. Therefore, we are responsible. Resolution of our separation has no military solution. Only through dialogue and, re and reconciliation can we do it. There were Palestinian efforts at reconciliation from the very beginning, and a big role of Arab mediators was played. Egypt took the major responsibility for one and a half years, and it tried its best. We reached a detailed agreement. It was bridged and edited by Egypt into what was called an Egyptian paper. We signed it, despite our reservations. Hamas did not it had reservations about the final Egyptian edited version. I know we need help and to perform other steps to rebuild confidence. We need ongoing political discourse, partnership, power sharing arrangements, but we need above all to sign now before the Arab summit in Tripoli. Will you please if we do, then we will engage our Arab brothers in helping us implement the agreement. If we don't, that opportunity will be lost. Ladies and gentlemen, a united Palestine is required to have a free and independent Palestine. Thank you very much. Nabil Shah, thank you very much indeed. You say united Palestine is required. You are, remain far apart and hostile to each other, don't you? Your president, 
Uh, Mahmoud Abbas refers to Gaza under Hamas as an emirate of darkness. How, how conducive is that to reconciliation? When you are uh, at uh, the kind of separation we were in and at the kind of civil war that we engaged, words just really are part of the expression of that horrible condition. Well, let's look at the casualties, I mean, which are far more important than the words. 1,431 Palestinians killed by Palestinians over the last nine years. What did they die for? What did they die for? In, in my mind, they died in vain. And in my mind... That's a should, terrible admission. Yes, we should overcome this. We, we, nobody in struggle against an enemy like our enemy can really afford to engage in civil war. We have become in civil war and we need to extricate ourselves out of it in words and in deeds. And I think we have the opportunity. But perhaps uh, since uh, you have lived through so much bloodshed and so much failure in negotiations, perhaps you are no longer the right people to lead the Palestinians through this. Perhaps it's, perhaps it's time to step aside and say, we've had our go, we've failed, and now it's time for new blood to come in. I think we need a unity government. That's what I talked in, in, my, in my first two but minutes. But made up of new people. Well, new people are very important to rejuvenate our movements. The old but guard I, has failed, hasn't it? The old guard has not totally failed. I think its basic failure well, is Well, 1,431 people would give credence to the idea that they have failed. 1,431 no, people who you say, by I your know, own I word, know have we, died in vain. We have That's failed. a terrible cost. We have failed in our civil war. We have not failed in facing a very difficult enemy. We were a, a situation in which the only interest in us was as refugees who needed help. Today, we are a people who have recognized right of self-determination, who are trying to build a state and are really at the focal interest of the whole world. And we've done that with our struggle. All right, Nabil Shah, thank you very much indeed. Now let me ask, please, Mohammed Nazal to please give us your view of the conflict with Qatar <coughs> and how you see it being resolved. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I would like to emphasize that Hamas is committed to rec reconciliation and national unity. We are trying to reach an agreement with all Palestinian factions, in particular, our brothers in Fatih movement. Despite all our sincere efforts, no agreement was reached. You can ask me why. I can't tell you that there are two main reasons for this failure. Firstly, the American-Israeli negative interference and imposing the quartet impossible conditions. Secondly, due to the American-Israeli pressures, the Egyptian insisted on us accepting and signing final agreement without taking into consideration our reservations. Now, you can ask me what is the solution for reconciliation and national unity. I can say in a brief, the only way for the future is to sit down to meaningful dialogue with no preconditions. And we in Hamas movement are willing to do this. Mohammed Nazar, thank you very much indeed. You say you're committed to reconciliation, but somehow the fact that you haven't signed the peace deal is all somebody else's fault, isn't it? It's the Egyptians' fault, it's the Americans' fault, it's the Israelis' fault. Yes. But the fact is you have had plenty of negotiations with Fatah, and you're the ones who won't sign the peace deal. So you're the obstacle. Of course, the Palestinians are responsible for that. 
But you, your side too. Yes, but you must not ignore the factors of Americans, of Israelis, factor of Egyptians. Okay, but let's talk about your responsibility. You say you bear some responsibility for this. Why have you felt unable to sign this peace deal? Isn't it more important to stop the killing of Palestinians by Palestinians than to have political differences with Fatah? You, know, you are talking with what's, killing what's Palestinians. What's the most important thing No for you. killing Palestinians now. If you are talking about uh, three years ago, uh, since three years ago, there is no Palestinians killing. Now we you've are... Got, you've got hundreds of Fatah supporters in your jail, just as they have hundreds of your supporters in their jails. You, you know, every revolution has internal problems. <laughs> That's a bit more than a... We're no, not no, talking no. about we, parking offences every, every here. We're talking about have, hundreds of people in each other's jails. Every revolution has internal problems. Why, why we are negotiating with our brothers in Fatah? Because we want to go outside of the circle. This is our responsibility. Where are the negotiations but going? They're going ignore, nowhere because you, you've blocked them. You can't ignore the American pressure. Mohammed Nazal, Mahmoud Abbas, the president of Fatah, he says that it's Iran that is stopping you. He said that it's Iran that is stopping Hamas from signing this agreement. Is that true? No. The Iranians are saying it's to you, stop, through, don't sign this agreement. No, no. Uh, you know, I want to tell you, there is a propaganda. They are always talking that Iran is behind of Hamas. Syria is behind of Hamas. Qatar is behind of Hamas. This is what they and are saying. And you're saying, saying Fatah is, is in league with the Israelis. No, we are not saying that. Well, we are saying your that... Your spokesman said it. There is... He said the, Fatah is collaborating with the Israeli occupation to the detriment of the Palestinian cause. They just said it. You know, it. what we are saying, we are saying that there is interference from American and Israeli sides. This is what we are saying. All right, okay. Mohammed Nazar, thank you very much indeed. So now let me please ask Abdullah Abdullah from Fatah to give his view of the conflict with Hamas. Almost three years ago, we had a split in the Palestinian uh, society, in the Palestinian national movement, and uh, some sides tried to use some pretexts to justify what happened at that time. But almost three years ago, uh, have passed with all its bad times, with all its negatives, with all its detriment to the progress of our uh, national cause. The response of Hamas to the Goldstone Report, uh, in my opinion, is a signal that ushers a new way to reconciliation. Hamas no more can claim the political differences with Fatah is too wide to reconcile. Hamas recognized twice in its response to Goldstone that Oslo Agreement uh, was arguing for it and, and uh, attacking the Israeli practices. Hamas also recognized that continued uh, attack on Israel militarily at this time is not in the national interest of Palestine. Uh, the change of heart of Hamas uh, against the military use uh, in Gaza Strip, it doesn't mean that they are abandoning their right to resist the occupier, doesn't mean that it is a sign of cowardice, but rather a new reality learned through direct experience, although we don't prefer to be the disciples of Montesquieu in order to have every lesson learned through direct experience. We realized in the past two years that resistance with one in, in Gaza Strip did not bring us closer to liberation. We re, uh, realized that negotiations, when we were divided, did not take us anywhere. Therefore, the ground is prepared for our unity to reconcile and work ahead for the uh, challenges facing us. Abdullah Abdullah, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> so with all this unity and all this struggle to keep your cause alive, why don't you have a peace deal with Hamas? Exactly. We offered our hand. We still do. In fact... So who's to blame? Is it Iran, as your president says? Th that doesn't bring us any closer. The, it is, is it Iran? Us. Is it is us. 
Is it? Well, your president I, seems to think it's Iran. But it's there, are, there, there are influences. We don't deny that. There are influences, there are regional interests. But finally, the, the, the uh, answer... Isn't that what you're afraid of, answer, Hamas connection the, with Iran? Isn't the answer lies of? with us. We, we want every connection we have to any country, whichever that country may be, to serve the cause of our people. We are not afraid of connections. We had connections. What would serve with the, the cause of your people, time. Abdullah? Abdullah is, unity. To, is to get a peace deal, wouldn't it? Uh, it's not a peace deal. It's a unity. Well, we you, have a reconciliation agreement. We have to consolidate our internal front. We have to strengthen the steadfastness of our people. That cannot come if we are and divided. You failed. It only comes when we are together. And you have Their failed. flesh is year our flesh. After year Their blood after is our year. blood. Excuse me. You have failed year after year after year. Why no. don't you admit defeat and ask somebody else to come and do the negotiating for you? Because clearly, your leaders aren't capable of doing it, are they? Our leaders from day one said they are leading a national liberation front. This national liberation front, the people's warfare takes a long time. Poverty, but it has corruption, death, torture, extrajudicial killing. That's this, been the menu that your regime has inflicted on the Palestinians. Th th that is not the reality. The reality that is, is the, reality the building. Because every human rights group tells you it is. No, the reality is building our institutions, keeping our commitment to the realization of our national rights of our people, not compromising one iota of these rights with all the difficulties, with all the hardships, and all standing right. up okay. high in the face okay. of the challenges of our enemy, Abdullah, and we will Abdullah. succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now let me please ask Osama Hamdan from Hamas to give us his view of the conflict with Fatah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everybody. I have to say first that the problem or the division is a political division. It's between two opinions how to deal with the Israelis, how to freedom our people, and how to liberate our country. We believe in Hamas, and we are still committed to the resistance. And we believe it's an idea how to manage the struggle with the occupation, not to fall in love with this occupation like what we have seen in the last years. The negotiations for about 20 years did nothing but more sufferness for the Palestinians and more losses. What is happening now in Jerusalem, in West Bank, building settlements is a clear sign for that. Everyone knows that we have tried hard to achieve a reconciliation, but this is not supposed to be by force. It's supposed to be by understanding, talking to each other. We have always rejected the outside interference, mainly the United States and Israel. We believe we have to stand together as Palestinians to face all the political pressures on our people and on our cause. In fact, I believe we have to have a direct talking and a direct dialogue on the highest Palestinian level. We have also to discuss the national unity on the basis of the partnership. No one can say that he is the only side who can control and lead the Palestinians by himself. We gave our hand to our brothers in Fatih, knowing that finally we have to reunite. No one can achieve his goals by the division. Thank you. Osama Hamdan, thank you very much. You say you gave your hand to Fatah, but you yes. won't sign the peace agreement with them. Why not? It's not a peace agreement. It's a paper which was written by the Egyptians. There is differences between what we have agreed on with Fatah and uh, the written in the paper. So we said, let's return back to the papers which we have signed on. If that happened, we will sign directly. There's been a draft for five months. It's not going anywhere. That draft, Why not? There was an initial draft which he has accepted. Then a changes came to this draft. Those changes came by the, the pressure of the United States. That's clear. David Hill led those uh, pressures. So again, it's somebody else's fault. You don't take no, any responsibility not, for excuse this. Excuse me, it's not somebody's fault. We had agreed on some things. We had signed papers about the PLO, the reconstruction, about some other issues. Those papers were changed in the final draft, which is known as the Egyptian paper. 
We Mahmoud are ready. Abbas says you're just making excuses at the end. You're just making excuses okay. and Iran is telling you to do He that. can try us going back to those signed papers from both sides, Hamas and Fatih, during the, the, the negotiations in Cairo. If he's saying that Iran is making pressure on us, uh, a natural question will, will, will be here. What about the Israelis and the American pressure? I'm not trying to say he's following what they are saying, but all the time when we were negotiating in Cairo, Mr. Ahmed Qriya Abu Ala was telling us this will not be accepted by the Israelis, this will be rejected by the Americans. But isn't so the fact is there's, there's no trust between you, is there? There's no, there's no trust if there whatsoever was, between you. There is a bad experience, but I think we have to build trust between each other by working together. You call this a political problem. It's a human problem, isn't it? It's I mean, a political problem, it's not Abdullah a human problem. Abdullah is the only person who's actually mentioned the Palestinian people in this. Nobody else has actually talked about the plight of the Palestinian people. Well, we have Suffering to because of the disagreements and the arguments the Palestinian and the conflict people, between your two groups. Excuse me, the Palestinian people are suffering because of the occupation. The Palestinian people are suffering from the occupation. No one is talking about the occupation, which is the main issue. No one is talking about the Western support for the occupation, which is, which is one of the reasons of the sufferance of the Palestinian people. Osama Hamdan, thank you very much indeed. I am going to turn the floor now over to you, the audience. There's a gentleman on the left up there. Yes, you. Uh, good evening. My name is Mu'ad and I'm a Palestinian. Um, Dr. Shaath, you mentioned that um, the parties need new people. And uh, Mr. Hamdan mentioned that, um, that, in a that the uh, resolution, that the current Palestinian situation can be solved in a democratic way with the current institutions. Over the past, 60 years, we've seen what Fatah and uh, Hamas have been about. Constant bickering, uh, continued hooliganism in the streets, and continued violence over the past five years where 1,400 plus people have died. What message is it sending to us Palestinians who are living outside, who continuously see land being taken in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip? What is it telling us? We're telling you we want to resolve this. We are telling you it's really very tough to fight the Israeli occupation. The Israelis uh, have international support, have a strategic alliance with the United States, and it's very tough to fight them. And therefore, in many cases, when we come to a very frustrating moment, when we differ about how to go on, we have problems. And this time, we had the worst problem. We are telling you we want to resolve this. We are telling you we are determined to bring back our unity. And when we fall into problems, these problems have to be solved. And solved by reconciliation, not by war. Solved by dialogue, and not by uh, fighting each other. But our words have been spoken over the past 60 years and nothing's happening. No, no, 60 years is not nothing happening. 60 years we were a case of a defeated people who were considered just refugees who need help from the international community. We are now a people with the right to self-determination on our land and the whole world thinks our problem is the single most important problem. We have gained this by struggle. We didn't gain it by fighting each other. Okay, let me bring in Mohamed Nazal here. Uh, actually, I want to, to ask, to answer the question, big question. Who is the enemy of Palestinians? The Israeli. The occupation. Israeli occupation. The occupation. Exactly. Some Absolutely. people are trying to transfer conflict between Israelis and Palestinians to Fatih and Hamas. We can't Someone deny... Someone is trying to do you know, that? We can't den Haven't deny... Haven't you killed enough of your no, own no, no, people no, for please, that to be a reality? Give me a moment. We can't deny and ignore that there is a big differences, political differences, between Fatih and Hamas. But it was not civil war as, you, as the term which the, many people, they are using it. It was some clashes. It is not a civil war because civil war, it's happening uh, among all parties, all groups in one community. It was a clashes between Fatih and Hamas. So it's really not important. 1,400 people dead. No, no, it is not 1,400. Killed by Palestinians. It is not uh, 1,400. How many is it then? What's the figure? I don't know What's exactly. I don't, you know, one person killed by clashes, we are rejected that. But we are not talking about, num about numbers. There was no civil war. 
it was and it is now a big conflict, a big differences between Hamas and Fatah. Why we are here, why we are talking now? We are talking now to resolve the problems between Fatah and Hamas. There's no sign that you're resolving these problems in we any are way trying, whatsoever. You know, you can see what's happening in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Sudan. I mean, by dialogue, only dialogue. This is the way to resolve our conflict or our problem. I think we have one way okay, I'm to resolve take, our right. problem by dialogue. Okay, I'm going to take a question from the gentleman in the front row there. Yes, sir. This question is to uh, Dr. Shah, Dr. Abdullah. Um, my name is Mohammed. I'm from Palestine. Obviously, any reconciliation or national unity needs trust, and there's a lack of trust between Hamas and Fatah. But my question to you is, how can Fatah specifically um, ex expect trust from any Palestinians when Fatah has been negotiating endlessly and without preconditions with Israel for most of my life while Israel expands its settlements, increases its siege, denies the right to return, imprisons thousands of Palestinians. How can we trust you when your leader Mahmoud Abbas hamstrings the Goldstone Report in the UN? How can we trust you? My dear friend, what needs to be understood in this hall is the difficulty of resolving the Palestinian problem. Not because we Palestinians are stupid or incapable, not because we Palestinians have not given enough sacrifices, but neither have we been able to liberate our land by war or by, or by negotiations. We fought for a hundred years and we are still an occupied country. This is not because we are, we are not sacrificing or because we are negotiating. It's because your enemy are the Israelis, who are European Jews right. that were persecuted Dr. by Shah. European Christians, Dr. and Shah. we are made to pay the price. Dr. Shah. And because of a, a, an agreement and, and, and strategic alliance between the Israelis and the Americans, that makes it very difficult for us to achieve results. Okay, let's the, let the questioner come back. Please. Dr. Shat, it's very obvious that you understand the strategy has failed. My question to you is why do you continue doing it? During the last year, Hamas did not send one rocket against the Israelis from Gaza. It's not because they are cowards. It's because it's impossible. Any, anybody who knows what happened in Gaza a year ago, the Israelis devastated Gaza and the people resisted bravely, but it was impossible to continue. Let me you go must back understand, to, right, let it me is go very difficult. The, questioner here and the ask point him, is, and ask him what kind of strategy you would like to see. It is not Fata easy, pursue. neither can you just negotiate alone, nor can you just fight alone. Dr. You Shaf, have to I want continue to go back. looking for ways Dr. of Shaf, facing the Israelis. I want to go back to the question and ask him what Right. You would like to see Fatah pursue in terms I, I, of... We need to negotiate amongst ourselves. We can't do, the, do this without outside influence because that brings in outside pressures. We need to have a united front that does not discount any form of resistance, whether it's military or non-violent. Um, unfortunately, your leadership has completely discounted and demonized people who do use military resistance. We need to step away from that kind of demonization. We need to work together. And I want to know what... Uh, this, this also goes to the representatives from Hamas. What are you going to be doing to gain the Palestinian people's trust? Because you've lost a lot of that as well, unfortunately. Osama Hamdan. Well, in fact, I believe we have uh, to reevaluate the political process, either the negotiation or what had happened in the Palestinian situation. Uh, we are deeply concerned about that. Uh, and because of that, through the Palestinian dialogue, we insist to have an elected Palestinian National Council for the PLO. So all the Palestinians all over the world can vote, can elect their representatives, can say their word, can participate in making the decisions. And this will make the difference, as we believe in Hamas, by asking the Palestinians or letting all the Palestinian people all over the world to say their word and to, to participate in the resistance against the occupation, not to wait someone to help them, but to do the things by themselves. Excuse me, I think that PLO must make a revision concerning the strategy of political process. I think 
the what does that mean make a revision uh, make a revision stop talking no no changing the strategy i think where is the peace process now apartheid wall the continuous building of settlements changing the nature of Jer jerusalem insisting on the jewishness the state of israel this is what what is going on the ground so i think plo and pa must change the strategy of pc process because there is no peace process now. All right, okay. I will add one word here, please. Briefly. About the strategy. The one who misses the strategy of the Palestinian National Movement needs to look into the daily happening. We never lost our sight of what is our strategy. We are a people under occupation. Our strategy is to make the occupation more costly to the occupier, force the occupier to abandon his occupation and get our country free. How? That they, I tell you. How? By lips, by words, by condominations? Okay. I tell you. The first prerequisite is to stick to our national rights, not compromising them, not abandoning them, not uh, uh, giving in to the, to the occupier, number one. And this is done. No one can claim any Palestinian leader is compromising the national rights of the Palestinian people. Second, to resist the occupation by all means available. That makes this occupation... Even military? If, uh, it, is, if it is military, fine. I want to because clarify you one thing. You it accused us excuse me. in the time of excuse Gaza me. aggression Could I ask you please that Hamas is to responsible for rockets. Could no. I ask you please what to be quiet Abbas? for one second? Please, this is not please, the case. Yes. please. I would we... like you just to be quiet for one second. We have come to an interesting point in the discussion. You appear to be holding out uh, the possibility that Fatah will now resume violence as, as uh, one of its tactics. I'm asking Dr. Shath if that is in well, fact the case. Can I just, but can, I ask, to to Shath, to, to, can I ask Dr. Shath, can I ask Dr. Shath please? With our strategy, no, I have to I please on, want okay. him to comment on this. Yeah, please, my brother, respect the chair, please. Fatah, yeah, the chair. Like started, the chair started the armed struggle and fought bravely for 26 years. Fatah, and before Fatah, six Palestinian revolutions between 1919 and 1948, including 1936 to 1939, when the Palestinian people gave 30,000 martyrs, which were 3% of the Palestinian people, the highest in history. So wh what are we talking about? It is the right of the Palestinian people to fight militarily. It is their right in accordance with international law. The question is, can a people fight for a hundred years? You have to use all your rights in the right time, in the right place, so that the people can withstand a long-term struggle. And our struggle is a long-term struggle. It's not a struggle that ends in two days or two months or two years. I was born in the struggle. I was born in 1938. I was born in Safad. In Safad, the, no doctor could have arrived because Safad was the center of the leadership of the revolution. Okay. These people have struggled for a hundred years. All right. What are you talking about? All right, okay, Osama Hamdan. Well, uh, uh, it's a good point. First of all, Algerian people, they fought it for 132 years, and then they liberated their homeland in Algeria. Algerians. One, after 100... Algeria? Yeah. 130 years? Yes. Never continuously. Uh, exactly. For some this time, is, this and is they the start, point. and they please, come, and please, they please, start. Let doctor, them have their doctor, doctor Shah, please. this is the point. Okay. Fatah started the resistance against the occupation in 1965, when there was a free, a free Gaza and West Bank. They started the fight to liberate Yafa, Haifa, Tele, uh, uh, 48 Safad, Akka, you, 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 you said that you are still stick to your national goals. What about these places? What about those cities? Now you are talking about just only Gaza and West Bank. But, but you it's too, not, you talk no, about a no, state in Gaza and the West no, Bank. Till now, you talk about the Hudna. I mean, this is, okay, we are exactly. too far Please, away. Let, what let, are we talking let, about? Let me continue, Dr. Nabil. Till now, we are still 
insisting not to recognize the occupation as a state because recognition of Israel, it means that we are dropping down our rights in the occupied territories, 1948. Excuse me, Dr. Nabil. So it brings us to the point which I mentioned initially. We have to talk about our political program. What is the definition of the Palestinian interests? What is the, the, def the definition of the Palestinian national rights? How to manage the struggle against the occupation? This is the major issues which we are supposed to talk about okay. and to agree on, and then we can move sure. forward. All and right. I believe we will not need more than 15 years to achieve our goals if we were united together. Okay, I'm going, to, I am going to take another question. I would like some questions for Hamas, please, for this side. Who has questions for Hamas? Uh, lady up there, yes. You have a question for Hamas. Okay, I have a question, but first a general comment. Where are you from? Uh, Lebanon. You've managed to lose not only the Palestinian a spirit of resistance in the Arab world, but you've also managed to lose the Arab spirit of resistance in the Arab world. Right now, Al-Aqsa is being threatened of coming down, and there is no one moving. Like, literally, there are no Arabs moving, no one speaking up against it. As in, I'm talking about the nation, uh, not nation, like um, administration-wise, but population-wise. There is no mass movement to change that. And I think the part of what makes people want to change is the leadership they have. And if the leadership is failing to, to, in, uh, to instigate that kind of resistance inside of us, then I think it's time for all of you to step down. So my question to you is today, what have you taken from this debate? After seeing what students have, have to tell you, you failed us all. Are you ready to step down and allow a new generation to come up in your place and try to tackle what you failed to do? Osama Hamdan, would you like to go first on that? Well, uh, well, I believe we are the new generation in Palestine. In fact, we are the new generation in Palestine. And I believe if someone feels upset about what happens, that encourages us to continue our struggle and resistance against the occupation. And also, it, I hope it will convince all the Palestinian leaders to go forward to the Palestinian reconciliation on the basis of the Palestinian people interests, not on the basis of an organizational interest. The questioner was shaking her head in disbelief. What did you want to say? We've spent the entire night asking you questions, and all of you have failed to answer any questions that we have. We are a new generation that's coming up, and we want to fight against the enemy, against please, the occupation. Please we come want and fight, the land. for heaven's not... sake. Please come are to Palestine. To the are you ready? Tomorrow. Are you up for this? Of course, you are ready. I'll, I'll be in your office. Come tomorrow, and take then. over. Thank you. That's that's all all I I to to Doha. Come to Palestine. <laughs> Abdullah, Abdullah. Last month, we were commemorating the fifth anniversary of the uh, resistance of Belain. About 500 people were in attendance. Two among the wounded, there were two, one 12-year-old boy and one eight years old old man. We are a people that have a cause that is fighting, resisting the occupation. By all it means, young and old, men and women. We have the international uh, movement of solidarity with the Palestinians. We have as many as hundreds of non-Palestinians in that march that comes to, to support in solidarity with the Palestinians, be it in Sheikh Jarrah in Jerusalem, be it in Ma'asara, be it in Beit Ummar, be it in Ni'lin, be it all the places where we have resistance to the occupation. Our strategy is we will continue the resistance under all circumstances. No question about the cost of this resistance. And our resistance is not only directly against the enemy in our home. We will follow the enemy in every place. We can encircle him.
Okay. We can All order right. him. Okay. We can make him pay the price. Let me go to, back to, to the question. Did you hear anything that in that answer, in any of these answers, that has encouraged you? I found no answers. I'm just. I. I wanted to say this so you guys go back home and at night instead of sleeping as you usually do, probably think about this. Think about what have you done to help us reach a greater day or better. Okay. <laughs> Gentlemen near the top. Hello. Um, I'm Lebanese and I uh, seriously regret the question I'm going to ask you. Um, to what extent do you consider yourself brothers if, um, if during the, you spent, uh, you've spent the last years fighting uh, each other for power and uh, you're both loyal to, uh, more loyal to external powers than to your own country and your own uh, population? Nabil Shaf, would you like to take that? I agree with you. I, I, I started this from the very beginning. We, the question is not who of us can win and who can lose. The question is whether we both together can form a unity so that we can win against the enemy. So long that there are people here who still think which is better, Hamas or Fatah, we are, have no way we can advance. The only way we can advance if tomorrow we sign an agreement and the day after tomorrow we start implementing it. Okay, Mohammed Nazal, you want to come in? Uh, I have one comment. The new generation in this hall are calling Palestinian leaders to reconciliation and uh, Palestinian unity. And I am agree with them. But I want to, from them also to make pressure on Arab regime because Arab regime are responsible for the situation of Palestinians. I gave you example. When, Why are, you, Qatar, when are you going to take some you know, no, responsibility? Qatar, you Qatar. blame everybody else. No, no, no. When are you going no, to take no, some no, responsibility? No, no, no. You know, why Qatar can make an agreement among Lebanese groups? Why Qatar, and it is a small country, why Qatar can make an agreement among Sudanese people? This is the question. So I want from you to make pressure on the Arab regime. How would you answer that? Let me go back to the question here. Well, um, I think you both agree on the fact that you need to advance and to uh, set up an, uh, uh, a common uh, strategy that would fight Israel. But are you willing to, to step aside if your strategy, if your, if your uh, intention to, uh, to have a common uh, strategy failed during the last years, are you ready to step aside and to let other people try? Of course. Are you ready? Is you Hamas know, ready to step aside? You, you know, think it's a pleasure? Yeah, I need you to. know, <laughs> under the, co the convention agreement, we have right to resist occupation, Zionist occupation. Nobody can stop the resistance against Zionist occupation. Mohammed Nazar, that wasn't the question. Will you step aside if you fail? Will you step aside and allow somebody else to take over? No, 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 we can try. I think, I think, you, had your, I think you had your answer. No, I, I think you had your answer. Ma Osama Hamdan. Well, uh, I, I have uh, to say two words. First of all, it's clear from what we are saying now that the only meaning option against the occupation is the resistance. And this is a good step to reunite the Palestinians on a clear project. Resist the occupation, liberate your lands and people. This is the first point. Resist by what means? By all the meanings, mainly by the, the militant resistance. This is the only way to show the occupation. It costs him a lot. It happened in South Lebanon, and it happened in Gaza, and it will happen in every part of Palestine. So you're calling for a full-scale return to violence. Is that what you're calling it's for? It's not a violence. You have to understand it's not a violence. It's a resistance. Killing is not violence? It happened in France during the Second World War against the Nazis. That was violence too. That was okay, violence too. It's, it's a legitimate violence. It's not only yeah. a violence. It's a legitimate violence because it's against the occupation. Every nation who suffered from the occupation resisted that by militant way. 
If you did not do that, you will lose your cause. Okay, I think your, the your position is clear. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the point where I'm going to ask you to pick up your voting machines and vote on the question, do you have confidence in the current Palestinian leaders? If you want to vote yes to that, you simply press button one. If you want to vote no to that, you simply press button two. Whichever button you want, would you press it now? You only have to press one to, and your vote will be communicated directly to the computers. We should have the result for you very shortly. All right, there the result is. 11%. Eleven percent. Eleven percent have confidence in the Palestinian leaders. Eighty-nine percent do not. A brief comment from our speakers before we depart. A massive vote of no confidence, Nabil Shah. No, I think the climate is very clearly uh, what it what it voted, and I think you have to consider in the Arabic, the Islamic recognition here. You are responsible. We are your people. And if you want better governments, you have to be better yourself in order you will become the governors and okay. you will become better people. Okay, Abdullah, so Abdullah, Abdullah, very briefly. <laughs> one, one sentence, please. Very briefly. We're running out of time. Leadership doesn't come by parachute. Leadership is won by hard work in the field for the cause of the people. Okay, Osama Hamdan, briefly, one briefly, sentence, please. Briefly, I think it's a tricky question because if you support resistance, you will not vote for the people who are negotiating Israel and vice versa. So you can't put them together and ask the question if you trust them all. All right, Mohammed Nazar. Uh, first of all, I respect, I respect the result because this is the opinion of the people here. Secondly, I don't know what do you mean by leadership? Do you mean PA, Palestinian? Because now we are, according to our uh, brothers, okay. we are outside of uh, PA. Palestinian leaders, it meant all of them. Thank you very much. Thank you to all our speakers, in fact. And thank you very much to you, the audience, for your questions. The Doha debates will be back again in a month's time. Till then, from all of us on the team, have a safe journey home. Good night. Thank you for coming. Good night. Mm -hmm.